All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Valsa Williams. The headlines. 12th Asia Europe Meeting Summit begins in Brussels today. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu leads the Indian delegation. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe to arrive in New Delhi on a three-day visit. In Bhutan, general elections are being held today. At least 19 people killed in a shooting incident at a college in Russian annexed Crimea. And India to face Oman in the opening match of Asian Men's Hockey Champions Trophy in Muscat this evening. The 12th Asia-Europe Meeting, ASEM Summit, begins in Brussels today. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu, who reached the Belgian capital last night, will lead the Indian delegation at the two-day summit. The theme this year is Global Partners for Global Challenges. The meeting will bring together heads of state of 30 European and 21 Asian countries besides top representatives of the European Union and Secretary General of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN. Our correspondent covering the Vice President's visit has filed this report. On the first day, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu is scheduled to hold a one-to-one -one meeting with the King of Belgium, King Philip at Presidential Palace in Brussels. Sri Naidu is likely to discuss the bilateral matters and issues of mutual interest and cooperation. Sri Naidu is scheduled to attend the opening ceremony of Asia-Europe Meeting Summit at Europa Building. This will be followed by his participation in the special session with the stakeholders. Tariq Rathir, AIR News, Brussels. During his stay, the Vice President will address the Indian diaspora at the Jain Culture Centre in Wilrick, Antwerp. Mr. Naidu will also pay floral tributes at the monument of Father of the Nation Mahatma Gandhi, located at the Governorate of Antwerp. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe is arriving in New Delhi this evening on a three-day visit to India. He will hold wide-ranging talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his stay. Both leaders are likely to review the status of the India-assisted housing projects in Sri Lanka's Jaffna. Our correspondent reports that the India-Sri Lanka ties have been marked by close contacts at all levels in recent years. India is among the top four investors in Sri Lanka with cumulative investments of over $1 billion since 2003. The investments are in diverse areas including petroleum retail, IT, financial services, real estate and telecommunication. Sri Lanka has long been a priority destination for direct investment from India. It is one of India's largest trading partner in SARC. India in turn is Sri Lanka's largest trade partner globally. Trade between the two countries grew rapidly after the India-Sri Lanka Free Trade Agreement in March 2000. Seikya, Air News, Delhi. Sri Lankan President Maitribala Sirisena has categorically rejected the reports in a section of the media about him alluding to the involvement of India in any manner whatsoever in an alleged plot to assassinate the President and a former Defence Secretary of Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan President spoke to Prime Minister Narendra Modi on phone yesterday and said such mischievous reports were utterly baseless and false and seemed intended to create misunderstanding between the two leaders as well as damage the cordial relations between India and Sri Lanka. Mr. Modi appreciated the prompt steps taken by Mr. Sirisena and his government to firmly refute the reports by publicly clarifying the matter. He also reiterated India's emphasis on the neighborhood first policy and the priority the Indian government and he personally attach to developing even stronger all-round cooperation between the two nations. President Ramnath Kovind has accepted the resignation of Minister of State for External Affairs M.J. Akbar. An official communique from Rashtrapati Bhavan last evening said the President accepted the resignation of Mr. Akbar from the Union Council of Ministers with immediate effect. Mr. Akbar resigned from his post yesterday in the wake of allegations of sexual harassment against him. In a statement posted on his Twitter handle, he said, since he has decided to seek justice in the court of law in his personal capacity, he deems it appropriate to step down from office and challenge the false accusations leveled against him. The Election Commission has fixed the expenditure ceiling of candidates for the forthcoming Assembly elections at 28 lakh rupees. 
In Chhattisgarh, all possible measures have been taken to make the candidates aware about the expenditure-related directives. More from our Raipur correspondent. Chief Electoral Officer of Chhattisgarh, Subrat Sahu, said that all candidates are required to open a separate bank account for election-related expenditure. The election expenditure is not permissible through existing or earlier bank accounts. The candidates need to open a bank account at least a day prior to filing nomination. The details of expenditure will have to be submitted by the candidates within 30 days after the declaration of election results. If the campaigner takes name of candidate or shares the data, then the expenditure of the program would be included in candidates' account. Vikalp Shukla, AIR News, Raipur. In Gujarat, school children in Aravali district are reaping the benefits of Atal Tinkering Laboratories. Niti Aayog had selected a number of schools across the country to establish the labs under the Atal Innovation Mission, where young minds can give shape to their ideas and learn innovative skills. Here is a ground report from our Gujarat correspondent. The central government thought about the future of students studying in science team and decided to set up Atal Labs in the school shop covering all districts in the country. Students of Aravali district Dhawal Patel and Rekha Malkani told that they were impressed with this lab. मेरा नाम पटेल दौल नटवर भाई है और हम अटल टिंकरिंग लैब से बहुत प्रभावित हुए हैं क्योंकि हमारी स्कूल में आज अटल टिंकरिंग लैब का शुरुआत हो चुकी है और हमें इससे सिलेबस आधारित हमें अच्छी जानकारी मिलती है आईटी के बारे में हम जानकारी प्राप्त कर सकते हैं और हम आगे बढ़ के आईटी में जाना हो तो हमें इससे प्रेरणा मिलती है ये लैब हमको प्रायोगिक क्षेत्र बहुत काम आने वाली है आगे अभ्यास में हमें यहाँ जो सीखने मिलेगा वो हमें आगे काम आएगा और हमने जो बनाया है वो the scheme aims to put creativity and innovation in school children, especially in the area of science, technology, engineering and mathematics. School children are very excited about the introduction of this lab and they believe that they will benefit greatly for their future. Bharat Devmani, AIR News, Aminabad. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. You can also log on to our website, newsonair.nic.in. In Bhutan, the third general elections are being held today. Polling for 47 seats of the National Assembly, the lower house of parliament, will start at 9 a.m. local time. Elaborate arrangements have been made for free, fair and peaceful elections. We have more from our correspondent. Polling will start at 9 a.m. local time and continue till 5 in the evening. Out of 4,38,000 registered voters, more than 3 lakhs are expected to exercise their franchise through EVMs today. Over 1,2,000 had opted for postal ballot facilitation booths. Around 83% of them had already cast their votes during postal polling held last week. There is a straight fight between Druk Nyamruk Shokpa DNT and Druk Funstrom Shokpa DPT parties in the third parliamentary elections. Rajkumar, AIR News, Thimpu, Bhutan. Maldives' outgoing President Abdullah Yamin has called upon people to maintain peace while urging the country's new leadership to put the interests of the country above their own. In a second farewell speech to the nation last evening, Mr. Yamin emphasized that his administration always worked on maintaining a strong relation with other nations, particularly countries in the region, and interference of external parties in internal affairs will not be tolerated. The comments came a day after Mr. Yamin's side faced a setback in a legal challenge in the Supreme Court against the results of last month's presidential elections. Mr. Yamin lost to opposition candidate Ibrahim Mohamed Soli by over 38,000 votes. At least 19 people have been killed and dozens wounded in a shooting incident at a college in Russian annexed Crimea. Russian investigators say an 18-year-old student ran through the Kirsch Technical College firing at fellow students before killing himself. There are also reports of a blast caused by an unidentified explosive. The investigative committee said most of the victims were teenagers. Six of the injured are in an extremely serious condition. The United States has asked Turkey for a recording said to provide strong evidence that missing Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi was killed at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. U.S. President Donald Trump told reporters at the White House that they have asked for the recording if it exists. 60-year-old Khashoggi vanished on the 2nd of this month after entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. 
Back home, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is sharing the rendition of Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Janato Te Ne Kahiye, by different singers around the world. In a tweet yesterday, Mr. Modi shared the version of Gandhiji's favorite bhajan by singers of Denmark, Cuba, Germany, Greece and Finland. To see these videos, please visit our website www.newsonair.nic.in and our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The Asian Men's Hockey Champions Trophy begins in Muscat, Oman today. In their first round-robin match, defending champions India will face host Oman at 10.40 p.m. Indian time. World No. 5 India had defeated Oman 7-0 when the two teams met the last time during the 2014 Asian Games. Besides India and Oman, the other teams taking part in the 11-day tournament are Pakistan, Malaysia, Japan and South Korea. In Denmark Open Badminton, Kedambi Shrikant and Saina Nehwal are among the five Indian shuttlers who will play their pre-quarterfinal matches today. In men's singles, while seventh seed Shrikant will take on China's Lin Tan, Samir Verma will face Jonathan Christie of Indonesia. Another Indian in the fray, B. Sai Pranit, lost to Huang Hu Xiang of China, 21-12, 14-21, 15 in the first round match last night. In women's singles, Saina will clash with world number two Akane Yamaguchi of Japan for a place in the quarterfinal. In the women's doubles round of 16, the pair of Ashwini Bonnapa and Nsiki Reddy will battle it out against the seventh-placed South Korean team of Lee So-hee and Shin Seung chan Online applications for Hajj 2019 will open from today while the offline procedure will commence on Monday. Minority Affairs Minister Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi made the announcement in this regard in Mumbai yesterday. He said an early start for Hajj 2019 will ensure better facilities as the concerned authorities in India and Saudi Arabia will get sufficient time to make the arrangements. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Saira Mujtaba. Thank you, Valsa. Minister of State for External Affairs M.J. Akbar's resignation and Sabri Mala Temple reopening amidst uproar are the prime focus in papers this morning. Me Too Storm Blows Away M.J. Akbar is the headline in the Tribune. Akbar quits a day ahead of hearing in defamation case, writes the Hindu. The Hindustan Times leads with Akbar quits as minister amid mounting pressure, charges. The paper adds, GOM to study if law needs tweaks on the NDA government forming a group of ministers headed by Home Minister Rajnath Singh to look into legal provisions against sexual harassment at the workplace. Sabri Mala opens gates but women not welcome, headlines the Hindustan Times. Day 1, Sabri Mala opens to violent protests, no woman gets entry into shrine, reports the Indian Express. The Times of India says, Supreme Court writ phase in Sabri Mala as protesters block women. NIA ends Kerala probe, there's love but no jihad, is a front-page story in the Hindustan Times on the NIA's examination of interfaith marriages in Kerala, not yielding any evidence of coercion that could result in prosecution in these cases. Zika cases rise to 100, center Russia's ICMR team to Jaipur, reports the Tribune. Audio tapes indicate Saudi journalist was decapitated, writes the Asian Age, on missing Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. 50 crore mobile numbers at risk of disconnection. The Times of India reports that there could be a fresh KYC headache for mobile users if SIM cards procured with Aadhaar verification are not backed up by a fresh identification. India's first railway station inside tunnel to come up in Himachal, notes the statesman of Keelong Station in Himachal Pradesh to be built at a height of 3,000 meters. And finally, Pandal makes news for right reasons. The Hindu reports on an eco-friendly touch to a Durga Puja Pandal in East Delhi as a team of 10 members made idols using 50 kgs of old newspapers. And with that, it's back to you, Valsa. Thank you, Saira. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. 12th Asia-Europe Meeting Summit begins in Brussels today. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu leads the Indian delegation. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe to arrive in New Delhi on a three-day visit. In Bhutan, general elections are being held today. At least 19 people killed in a shooting incident at a college in Russian annexed Crimea. And India to face Oman in the opening match of Asian Men's Hockey Champions Trophy in Muscat this evening. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.